All right, yeah. we're starting off with Mandy. Sorry. Okay, we are in chapter eight, verse one. Um, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he went to the temple again, and all the people were coming to him. He sat down and began to teach them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery, making her stand in the center. Teacher, they said to him, this woman was caught in the act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, Moses has commanded us to stone such women. That, uh, what then do you say? Now they were saying this to test him so that they might have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and wrote on the ground. When they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Who is without sin among you? Let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Amen. Um... When they heard this, they began to leave. The older people first left first, <clears throat> and one person left, then another, and then another, until Jesus was alone with the woman. And Jesus stood up, and he said to her, It seems that everybody had gone. Has anybody condemned you? And the woman said, Nobody, sir. And Jesus said, Then I do not condemn you either. Mm. Go now, but do not sin again. Amen. Mm. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, mm -hmm. but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, you are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from and where I'm going, but you do not know where I come from or where I'm going. Uh, you judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. Amen. 17. Your own law says that if two people agree about something, their witness is accepted as fact. I am one witness, and my Father who sent me is the other. Where is your Father, they asked. Jesus answered, since you don't know who I am, you don't know who my father is. If you knew me, you would also know my father. Jesus made these statements while he was teaching in the section of the temple known as the treasury. But he was not arrested because his time had not yet come. Amen. Amen. 21. Jesus warns of coming judgment. Later, Jesus said to them again, I'm going away. Will search for me, but your, but will die in your sin. You cannot come where I'm going. The people ask, is he planning to commit suicide? What does he mean? You cannot come where I'm going. Jesus continued, You are from below, I am from above. Mm. To this world, I do not. That is why I said that you will die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am who I claim to be, you will die in your sins. Verse 25, then said they unto him, who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, even the same that I say unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then Jesus said unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Amen. 29. And he who sent me is with me. The Father was not left me alone, for always do I do those things that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Amen. 
Amen. All right. We're going to give you each a few moments to go over your section and then share with us what you got from it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> In my section, what really caught my eye was um, <clears throat> how these people of authority brought this woman in, number one. Um, they only brought her in. Um, I don't know who she was committing adultery with, but there had to be another person. But anyways, they only brought her in, didn't take a time to really know her name or anything and I'm just picturing her just standing there feeling you know already less than already shame already um you know just looking down she cannot even look up I mean when things like that when shame comes out of your life, you know, you don't want to look at people in the eye. And, um, and the feeling that this lady is going through, um, it just, wow, that you think of it and the things that I think of it and the things that I have done and uh, in my life, you know, I mean, it wasn't like committing adultery or anything, but the things of um, that brought me shame or I felt shame for doing, you know, and trying to look at um, others in my life, trying to look in their eyes. It's such a hard thing to do, you know, but only God has that authority to love us into goodness, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I like the word dawn because we are going through before the dawn series, you know, and in she is brought before the light that's in the temple right now, you know, and that's Jesus. And um, we're going to find out so much more what Jesus is going to tell her. So ah, that's what I got. Amen. Man. Great job, sis. Great job. Monty? This woman who's been caught in the very act of, uh, of adultery is, um, yeah, how do you do that by yourself? Because there is no man. He didn't go. He wasn't at the temple. Um, so obviously, this is a setup of Jesus from several points of view. Not only would he have to enforce Mosaic law, uh, meaning she would have to be stoned. But he's also dealing with the issue of Rome because Rome denied them capital punishment. So it's a setup. It's a trap. If nothing else, uh, Jesus is unpopular. And the question you have to ask if you're watching this is, again, where's the guy? Yeah. So why wasn't this brought before the Jewish officials? And so I like the I like how this continues. Try this the next time someone tries to test you. Sit down and and write. You know, have you ever tried try, try that the next time someone comes and questions you? You just uh, instead of standing up and yelling back at them, sit down and start writing. So Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. But this is an interesting finger. Do you know what else that finger wrote? The Ten, the ten Commandments in stone. Yeah, it was his finger. And he's going to he's going to declare before the, the chapter is over that he wrote the Ten Commandments. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that he was the voice of the burning bush. And it was his finger. And how many times did he have to do that? Twice. Mm -hmm. And instead of passing judgment on the woman, that finger who wrote the law is going to pass judgment on the judges. Now he takes his finger, showing them not so subtly, you're dealing with the one 
who wrote the law initially. And uh, secret sin on earth, that's open scandal in heaven. So we have writing by the lawgiver himself, the finger of God. And does it say what he what he wrote? It doesn't. Um, I'm not sure. Am I running into the next? Uh, let's see. Verse 8. What does it say? Yeah, stooped down and wrote on the ground. Okay, that was my stopping point. I think I went a little bit over. No, um, I, I'm oh, nine. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, okay. you were perfect. You were okay because I'm nine. Monty. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know, what's interesting about um, Monty, you just said something about, you know, when um, to try and write when someone's accusing you of something. Mm, Is yeah. that what yeah, well, you know, you know, I remember back when I was working over at Kapiolani Medical Center, Pastor. You know, I uh, was an operator, and um, and this lady, uh, she was information. She would always come into the, the room, and she would always check all our writings. You know, because we have to write all the time. Right. And she was standing back of us, and when she stand in back of me, she says, "Oh, you're a little wishy washy today." And I thought, "Oh, how did she know that?" She said, oh, because I can tell by your writing. So mm. I don't know when you, <laughs> after that, I was like, wishy-washy. I don't want to be known as wishy-washy, you know? And I thought, oh, man. Cause, and she was pretty, pretty good with her, you know, mm. analyzing writing. She was really good. So, yeah, so I guess she was good with me, too, you know, at that time. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to share that. So in my area, it says, so everyone... It disappears. All Pharisee, everyone who's accusing, you know, her of what she's um, was brought in, you know, <clears throat> that was um, accusing her. Um, Jesus says, you know, tells her that neither do I accuse her. But um, like Monty said, it was the guy. The guy wasn't there. I mean, he was also in sin, you know. But they only bring the woman in. Maybe they couldn't have the man. I don't know, you know. And they could handle the woman bringing her in to face Jesus. But he was the only one who could condemn her. And, you know, and that's so true because Jesus was a sinless man. And he was, mm -hmm. the, he's the only one that can accuse any of us. So he's that's going true. to be the judge at the very end for all of us, mm -hmm. you know, when we have to face judgment. Well, right. not us. We're going to be, we're, we don't have to face judgment, right? Mm -hmm. um, Pastor, because we're going to be saved. We're going to be in heaven. Right. Right. Now, to accept Jesus Christ, you know, you're you'll have to face judgment. But the judgment you face is, did you accept Jesus Christ? And if the answer is yes, then praise right? God. Yeah. All of us do. So yeah. I don't think we're going to have to face judgment, right? So anyway, so but like I said, you know, the man was. I mean, <clears throat> he was without sin, so he didn't have to tell her. You know, all he he did to her was says, "Go and sin no more." You know, and um, our sins for all of us matters to Christ, you know, and the thing about having Christ on your side and you being obedient to him is that, you know, he's the only one that can forgive us mm -hmm. and he's the only one that can forgive sin. So I'm thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Good job, Auntie. Good job. Mm -hmm. All right. Jeremiah. All right. So. I was thinking, I never thought about this before, but as we've been studying, right, late in the past, the previous scriptures that we've looked through, Jesus has, like, identified himself as, like, the the living water, right? And now it's, like, a change of, and that was with the, the feast that was going on. And now it's a new thing. Now he says, instead of, like, I'm, a, like, the water of life or I'm the living water, he says, I'm the light of the world. And so it's cool because this isn't just like some like random change that Jesus does. This is this is actually what was like going on during the uh, the feast. So in the Feast of Tabernacles, the the people would would wait for the, the candlesticks to be lit and it was supposed to represent like God guiding the children of Israel through uh, 
to the wilderness, like, you know, by the fire. Jesus is saying, like, I am, I am that light. I'm the light that guides people. Like, this, these candlesticks, they're pointing to me. That's what, that's what this is. And he promises those that whoever, whoever follows that light will never walk in darkness. You'll have the light of life. Which doesn't mean you won't go through. Like, we've been talking about darkness, obviously, in, in this sermon series. But it's not that we won't go through tough times. It's that we won't, when we follow him, we won't be living in the darkness of sin. You're set free from that life of sin. So you don't have to walk in that kind of darkness anymore. And then the Jews, the Pharisees start to accuse him and say, like, you can't, you're just talking about yourself. Your witness can't be true. Because you're just, it's just you that's bearing witness. Um, which is sort of a valid, valid argument. Right? It can't, it's not that it can't be true, but if someone was giving a testimony of themselves, you might not necessarily believe them alone, right? But the Pharisees had a lot of other testimonies of who Jesus was. There was obviously John the Baptist. There was obviously scripture. Obviously, Jesus' works. There were there were more witnesses to what Jesus, who Jesus was, but they ignored all that and just focused on Jesus and his humanness. Um, <clears throat> but Jesus knew who he was, and he knew that his testimony is true because he. He knew that he came from the Father. And he tells them, you judge according to the flesh, which is what they were doing. They were just judging his human side. Mm-hmm. His, and um, the next the next line Jesus says, I think is so powerful. It's simple, but it's so powerful. It says, I judge no one. And Jesus is revealing his, his mission on earth. And it's not to judge anyone. And that's what we've just seen, right? With the the woman who was facing being stoned, right? Jesus didn't judge her. He didn't condemn her. He simply just told her to go and sin no more. That was Jesus' whole mission. And like that there is like what should like give us all hope and peace. Mm-hmm. That like we can we can come to Jesus and not face judgment. But even if Jesus were to judge, we would know that his judgment would be true. Like it wouldn't be unfair. If like whatever decision was made, because whatever decision Jesus were to make, if he were to judge, it would be it would be fair. And we would we would be okay with it. So that's what I gathered from from my second. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Auntie Joss. Okay. Um, from 17 to 20, here on um, the Pharisees, um, they were they were arguing because Jesus didn't have any other witnesses with him. There were no other witnesses, but Jesus responded by confirming that his witness was God himself, and that Jesus and the Father made up the two witnesses that satisfied the law that they made. They required two witnesses. So he said, yeah, me and me and um, my father. But um, he tried to, he told them that, that if you're seeking to know Jesus, you need to look closely. You need to look closely and you will know the truth that he is the Messiah and the Lord. Don't just make a judgment. Look closely. And then I didn't know what the temple treasury was. And so when I researched it, it said the temple, um, the treasury where he was speaking from is where they would have offerings. And there were seven boxes in there where they, there were collection boxes that were set up to receive offerings of money. Mm. But also there were candles that burned there that symbolizes the pillar of fire that led the people out of Israel to the wilderness. Mm. And Jesus called himself the light of the world. So the pillar of fire represented God's presence. So this temple, this, this, um, this temple known as the treasury was an important place. It represented God's presence, his protection and guidance. 
just as God is with us always, he protects us and he guides us and he is the light of our world. Mm. Amen. Great job. Auntie Sue, your turn. And then uh, Jesus tells them, you know, of what is going to happen and he's going to go away. But when they come looking for him, they're not going to find him. And that the people cannot go where he's going, that he's from above and we are from below. And we belong to the world, except if we accept Jesus, then our sins are forgiven because he's going to die on the cross for us. But we have to claim him as our savior. And if we don't, then we will die from our the wages of sin is death. Yeah. But I don't think they got what he was trying to get across to them, even though he said he was thy the I am. So I don't think they understood what he was saying. Well, you see at the end of it, they get a real clear understanding of who he is and they all like it. Uh, but good job, Auntie Sue. Uh, this, uh, ne we'll see next week at the end of Chapter 8. Um, he makes it very clear what he's declaring himself to be. But you're right. There, you know, He's being um, trying to lead them in a way. So great, great, great job, Auntie Sue. Um, Auntie Jocelyn. Within my sections, I took it a little bit more, you know, these Pharisees are no different from other people now. If you look at them, their belief, questioning, they questioned the from day one, they were questioning the Lord. And for what he did, they saw exactly what they did, what he was doing and what he did. And they still question in my in my section. Where are where are you from? You know, well, who, who you know? I'm maybe paraphrasing, but who gives you the authority? And that makes me think and remind me of people now that we need to be very careful mm -hmm. when we speak of our Lord. We need to be very very careful how we speak about our Lord and exactly ask the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to give us the words when people do, when people start denying or saying different things, like the Pharisees were asking, they were very, very pointed. They wanted to know, they did not believe. And so we need to be as Christians, and I also need to be very careful that we can be just like that. So we need mm -hmm. to. We need to make sure that we were right with God and we can ask him. Point, you know, we, we can answer the questions according to the will of God. Um, and uh, I guess, you know, they were, uh, we in Hawaii, we say po'opakiki means hard head. Mm -hmm. I think they were a little bit more than hard head. Um, they knew exactly what they were doing. Um, and that was what I got from my section. Great job, Auntie. And now, Auntie Hillary. Okay. So pretty much at this point, you know, in time, some are believing and some are still not sure. Do I go left? Do I go right? Do I go up? Do I they're not sure. So I guess the key word here um, seems to be like, it seems to be to me, believe, because yet it was evident that Christ was who he was mm -hmm. and who he said he was. And he already said, I am sent by my father. Right. So here, Christ, he brings light. So he brought light before them and they were and they were um, and they were, you know, all brought from darkness to light. But did they accept? Mm. Again, the key word is believe. Did they believe? No. Some did. Some didn't. 
So I that's what I got in my part of my my two little sections here. Amen. Amen. Great job. Yeah, great job. All right. Um. So so you, uh just you um had only two little sections, Auntie, but you said the key word of the day. You win the prize. Uh, belief. Um, John's um, <laughs> John's um, entire gospel centers around the need for people to just believe. And so it's very good. Let me open it up to everyone. Um, who would like to share what you got from the entirety of the section as you now see it read out together? Who wants to start? Go ahead, Auntie Joss. Thank you. You know, I, I imagine this poor lady um, she was placed in such a public position mm -hmm. and she stood there all by herself in front of mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. You know how humiliating, how shameful that could be that your dirty laundry is out there for everybody to see. But God poured his merciful and compassionate love upon her. Mm -hmm. And like her, I am not guiltless. And mm -hmm. so God knows all of my sins also. Mm -hmm. And I can come to him without shame mm -hmm. and with a sorrowful, sincere heart, ask for forgiveness when I seek him and he will forgive me just like mm -hmm. how he forgave her. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Absolutely. 100% true. Jeremiah, then Matthew Herbie. Um, <clears throat> I think where he says, neither do I condemn you, go and, and sin no more. Um, when I think of this, I don't just think about like how everyone else was like, everyone was initially condemning her and they all left. But I think about like how sometimes we can condemn ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like we, because, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, she, what she did was wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we make mistakes and sometimes like we make our, we feel so bad, so guilty that we condemn ourselves like, oh, I, I'm worthless. I deserve this and stuff. But mm -hmm. Jesus himself tells us like, I don't condemn you. Like no one, no one's condemning you. Neither do I condemn you. Just go and sin no more. And I think that's, that's an important thing to hold on to when it's so easy to put down yourself when you make mm -hmm. mistakes, know that like Jesus doesn't condemn you. So why would you condemn yourself? All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And that statement that you made, Oh, I'm sorry. Let me jump to Andy Herbie. Now I'll jump back and piggyback off what you said. Go ahead, Andy Herbie. Um, in order to fully get the depth of what you're saying, Andy, we uh, need to have you. Um, up Thank you. All right. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say to kind of hop on to what um, Jeremiah was saying, you know, when about condemning. And um, oh, I think I forgot to say on my part was that Jesus wasn't, um, he didn't tell her that she, um, that sin didn't matter. You know, she, he was just telling her to sin no more, to, yeah, not to sin. Um just to sin no more. Amen. Amen. Okay. And healing? Yeah, this is, to me, this is kind of funny um, with that, um, not Christ, not the woman, but the men. Mm. <laughs> I'll tell you why. You know, Christ loved going to Mount Olives because that was one of his favorite spots to go to all the time, which is the synagogue. Mm -hmm. But when he, um, when he withdrew from the crowd, but it wasn't really about even them condemning the woman as the men, I mean, the men condemning the woman, they were after Christ. Mm -hmm. They just yeah. used, they used her. And um, so, so what Christ did was he freed her at that time because of they were using her. Mm -hmm. People use people. They should use people. <laughs> we shouldn't, right? But but here they wanted to accuse him mm -hmm. and catch him because they could have easily taken the woman to see the priest. Hey, she was committing adultery. Get her, you know. But yet they did. And I love this about Christ. He stooped down 
And he came down not to their level up high. They were here. He came down to her. Mm-hmm. And he spoke to her. Low. Right? Met her eye to eye. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine that That just how God comes down to us and he tells us, you know, he doesn't stand up there and say, all right, you. <laughs> he comes down to us. Mm-hmm. And I just love that part about how he was so compassionate with her that mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Amen. Naughty, 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 thinking they could fool Christ, but they couldn't. They couldn't. He knew. He knew their hearts. Amen. Yeah, good, job. good job, Andy. All right, anyone else before I jump in? Monty, go ahead. Jesus condemned sin and accepted the sinner. He loved He loved the sinner. Yes. Sin yeah. And loved the sinner. And we, yeah. get, we get that backward. Mm-hmm. We we hate the sinner, but love the sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, just to make it even blatantly kind of stupid, but uh, talk about how wrong it is to go to McDonald's and hate ourselves for doing it, but we love to keep doing that, right? It's one of those mm-hmm. easy things. But what what I really like is that there was a distraction. You know, remember why Jesus came there in the first place, he was left alone. Nobody came to his house. And then he went there early, really early, to to preach in the, you know, to teach in the temple. And he sat down and, and was amongst them. And there was this interruption. And I, I get really distracted, you know, interruptions and stuff like that, just, be, just because I, I concentrate um, on a lot of things. And so to be able to handle distraction the way Jesus did. So this, you know, John is, John likes this contrast of light and dark, you know. So after revealing to them, the accusers, those ensnarers, that that they were sinners, how dark they truly were. That's when he says, I am the light of the world. And I'm saying that he just, flows that right into a sermon mm-hmm. they they slither away in their darkness and mm-hmm. those self-righteous and prideful pharisees having having been interrupted by them he, he uses their interruption as an illustration calm mm-hmm. um, serene jesus continues to to teach this time he had props to illustrate mm-hmm. It, it illustrate darkness. Right. And he just takes the the interruption in stride. It it it's like a, it's an opportunity for ministering. Mm-hmm. Whenever whenever the interruption or unexpected event comes, mm. if we could just say, okay, mm. you know. Mm. By the way, in, in in light of this, I'm the light of the world. You know, so beautiful how Jesus could do that. Amen. Beautiful, Monty. Thank you. Thank you. Sis, do you want to say something? Yes. What? um, I think Jesus could say that because he wasn't confusion. Hmm. You know, um, you look at the Pharisees and the scribes. I mean, they knew so much of the Bible of the Torah, you know, they knew the words, but they were so filled with confusion. And there's only one person that makes you confused, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's the, the enemy himself filled with confusion. And he was, the enemy was sneaking his way in any way possible, you know, and, and it was happening with leaders, the ones that were supposed to be, um, spreading the truth and spreading the word around and uh god jesus just sets them straight (laughs) you know and clears up that confusion so amen so um yeah this is you know one of the most famous stories in the bible it's also one of the most disputed stories in the bible uh the it's missing from a lot of the early codex the early manuscripts and stuff and but it's found in a few and um, one of the early church fathers um i think it was augustine uh surmised that one of the reasons it may have been out was because um later scholars uh, could not accept 
that Jesus could be this forgiving of sin. In fact, he went so far as to say that, you know, he feared, that many feared that if uh, this story were in the Bible, that uh, many wives would be uh, leaving their husbands to commit adultery. Um, but, but, but this great act of mercy was even too merciful for some people. Um, because some people see through God's eyes, the person, they love the person. And when they love the person, when you love a person, you actually love them, you condemn sin because sin is a disconnection of a person from life. And so you don't even have to think about the sin. You just love the person. But when your focus is on acts, um, then it's really hard to love people. Um, there's just some beautiful, you guys have already pointed out most of the beautiful stuff. Uh, I don't want to belabor the point, but um, a couple of things I want to ask in this and have you, you know, take away. Uh, Jesus came to teach and he gave them all a lesson um, on love versus law, right? Mm -hmm. And um, what, you know, true, honest uh, keeping of the law is, is actually loving people. That's that's the, the core of it, right? So he gives them a lesson on this. And when you come to Christ, what's the lesson you want to learn? Or are you willing to learn? You know, um, there were two groups of sinners that came before Christ that day. One who went away, who came in shame and went away in freedom. And others who came in condemnation and went away in shame. And, um, you know, the Pharisees and scribes were no less sinners than the lady was. Yeah. You know, difference is they weren't looking for a savior, and she was. And so they didn't mm. find a savior, but she did, you know. Mm. So, you know, when we're looking for the savior, when we're looking for the face of Jesus, we'll find him. And mm. we're looking for bitterness and hatred and stuff like that. We'll go away unhappy because uh, that's not what Jesus has to offer. Um, the, um, the writing in the ground, you know, a lot of people have speculated what he was writing. It didn't matter what he was writing because whatever it was, it led to freedom. It led to people making a choice to accept him or to walk away. And again, that's the choice that we have when we come to Jesus in, um, frustration and anger and things like that. And he gives us something, uh, do we accept it or do we leave it and walk away? Um, the lady accepted it, you know? She was happy um, when he said, and then and then I want, you know, a few things. I'm, again, we don't have time to go into everything, but he says, go and leave your life. Go and send no more love. Uh, my, I think a better translation is go and leave your life of sin. Go and leave your identification with this thing. Because think about this. She didn't just sin that night. That wasn't like, you know, she's all of a sudden like, oh no, they pulled me off the street, threw me into this bed and said, ah, and, you know, no, she, there, there was, you know, they knew they could catch her. They, there was something going on. She was, um, had left for whatever reason, left her husband um, or, you know, and, and, and engaged with a person uh, because she wasn't feeling love. She wasn't feeling acceptance. She wasn't feeling fulfillment of some sort, Right. And so she's finding it in, in, in broken ways. And so now her mental cycle is a life of sin, right? And Jesus mm -hmm. comes and he frees her of that and says, that's not who you are. You, I find no condemnation in you. I free you from that. You have now the power to go and live the way I see you, blameless. And so now she can walk away, no longer the person she was before the Pharisees came in, but walk mm -hmm. away completely free, right? completely um, empowered to live as the child, the daughter of God that he had called her to be. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the thing he calls each of us to do. It's not about the, mm -hmm. I don't want to say sin, you know, again, to an argument on sin versus, you know, importance, non-importance and stuff like that. The importance is we focus on Christ, right? Mm -hmm. He never names her sin. He never says, hey, you know, the adultery is pretty bad, but I still love you. No, he just says, I don't condemn you. I'm not here to destroy you. I've come to save you. And now you're saved. So go live saved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we focus, I think, personally, a lot more on destruction than we do salvation. Mm -hmm. I think if we spend our days focusing on our salvation and focusing what it means to live a life free in Christ, to live a life empowered, uh, mm -hmm. we would have a lot less problems with the destruction with the, the simple act, uh, attributes. Um, you can't 
dig out of a hole or can't climb out of a hole while you're digging into the hole. If that makes sense. You know, uh, anyway, there's a few things I got. And the rest of the whole chapter kind of um, illustrates that more and more. There's more of the Pharisees and scribes do not want to accept him, do not want to accept his message. And he keeps saying, listen, don't trust me, then trust the witnesses. Okay, trust my father, trust the word that you have, the word that you use, trust all of it. It all testifies about me. All of it. My miracles testify about me. Your law testifies about me. Um, but you don't want to believe it because you haven't come to me to be saved. You've come to me to be condemned. Mm -hmm. anyway. um, who would like mm -hmm. to close us in prayer? Amen. Mm -hmm. I will. I'm sorry. Can I just say one more thing? Just one more thing. Absolutely. You know, these, these people, I think they're probably also, they had ulterior motives because they, they maybe was trying to trap Jesus too. To mm -hmm. see what kind of action he was going to take, either he Absolutely. was going to, yeah, Monty brought that up, you know, or not, yeah. And mm -hmm. they, they're tricky, they're they're people are tricky. They again, they didn't come to Christ to be saved, they came to condemn him, and yeah. instead, they left condemned. So, you know, we, you know, when you come to Christ, what's your motive? You know, is it to find savior, salvation for yourself, and to live in the freedom that he's given you, or is it to bring other people to him to be condemned? Because every time we do that. You know, Lord, look at these people. They're not doing good. Oh, if they only knew you, they'd be good like I am. You know, um, every time we do it, we leave condemned. And so, um, you know, thank you, Auntie. All right, go ahead, Auntie Herbie. Our Father and our God, we are so thankful and grateful, Father, that you are, you spend this time with us, Father, as we study. We study your word, Father, and thank you that your word is life-giving for all of us. And we're grateful and thankful, Father, for this beautiful book that you give us to study who you are and we're grateful father and thank you for all your blessings and your holy spirit will continue to be with us and keep us all in your loving care in jesus name amen amen, amen. all right everybody go and walk free today i want to thank you for being here you guys all the wonderful next week uh, john chapter 8 verses 31 to the end of the chapter amen. see you then everybody good night, good night everybody